Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about Babylon 5, Season 1, Episode 3. It's called Born to the Purple. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. What's that face you're making? I was just reading something on the trivia. <laughs> I'll, talk, I'll bring it up. Okay, alright. <laughs> alright. Um, so, yeah, this episode is a Londo-focused episode, which, I mean, maybe that means it's one of our favourites already, because Londo's <laughs> the best, but we'll find out. Uh, so, yeah, Londo essentially is smitten, has a relationship with a stripper. Uh, or, I say stripper, a dancer. We don't actually see her strip. It's a dancer. Yeah. Uh, but it is kind of in a club on a, like, runway-style, like, stage. It's not... <laughs> Looks like a, yeah, like a future burlesque show. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's the, the best way to describe it. But, uh, she, and she is uh, a Centauri, uh, so this is kind of her first glimpse of what a, a lady Centauri looks like, which is kind of bald but with a ponytail, mm -hmm. which is an interesting look. Uh, just as striking as the, as the male Centauri are, but in a different way. I'll admit, I was kind of looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing the, the big... The fan head <laughs> on the ladies too, but okay, I get it. They're different. Yeah. Typically. I like the design. Yeah, no, I, I have no problems with it, for sure. They, you know, they revere a large forehead. <laughs> they do, they like a really large forehead. It is, it is their standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd fit in great then, wouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> so, we have uh, the plot here where she is, does care for Londo, but is actually secretly plotting to steal the purple files which yes. we'll, we'll get into but she's actually she's honey pot. yeah she's working for someone else and i say working she's actually a slave she belongs to another alien uh by the name of trachis who I actually i thought they were saying dracus at first as well that's very dracula certainly but that was trachis with a t mm -hmm. and he's forcing her to do this and she's kind of again it's against her will but she's bound by uh by law to obey and she has to drug Londo and steal this purple files. The purple files, this is a big bit of mythology we kind of get from this, is that the purple files are like all the secrets of all the noble families in the Republic of uh, Centauri. So with this information, someone could take down any of the families. And so it's like the highest, most guarded thing. And I actually got to thinking about why Londo, or why they have, like, why they all have access to this. And maybe it's like a mutually assured destruction thing where, like, well, if one family wants to take out another family, well, yeah, but they're going to take you down with them. Like, mm. you know, it's all in the one honey pot. Everyone can take down each other, so therefore no one does anything. You know? Right. Uh, uh, I assume right. that's the way it works, but... Uh, so what did you think of this episode? Are you, were you into this one? Yes. Actually, I really like this episode. I I, I watched um, a few of season one, episodes of season one. Well, a few, like 20 episodes of season one before... <laughs> But this is one that I remembered really well because I remember thinking that, okay, it's like a sort of a standard plot as in somebody falls in love for a woman who is just using him to be deceptive, but then she actually has feelings and it's interesting. Like, it's not, it's not a new idea, but because I really like their chemistry between the two, between the two of them, even though he is like a much older man, um, I do truly care when Londo is hurt and when he's in love like I <laughs> I am really invested in the relationship hmm. and it's probably just a, a credit to you know Peter Jurassic's acting he's really good in it yeah uh, of hell a man who is a combination of my name and Jurassic Park has to have talent I mean <laughs> so <laughs> could you get any better uh mm -hmm. no i i mean i like the episode i don't think it's probably the weakest episode out of the the three main episodes so far in terms of it being a bit tropey even though it has some like some of the lines of dialogue in this one are so good like i actually mm -hmm. noted down a couple that i wanted to remember because they were so good so and the opening scene in the in the, the, the bar right because basically one of the side plots of the episode is that Londo is supposed to be going to this, uh, like... Negotiations. Negotiations with, with uh, Jacquard. Because if, if Sinclair can, like, get these two to agree on this peace treaty for something, then it's a big win for Babylon 5 as a, as a concept. Let's like, say we can, like, solve these issues like this. It'll save a lot of li lives and 
Peace is actually better for both of them anyway. They just, they're too stubborn to admit <laughs> that peace is the best mm-hmm. option. So they come to like, yeah, I was like, hey, we've been trying to have this meeting for a week and you're in the strip club. What, what are you doing? And he's like, ah, sit down and enjoy the, sh- enjoy the show. I'm, I'm in the middle of something here. And he starts talking about how great the, the dancer is. And he's like, ah, you know, isn't the finest thing of all, you know, females. And this is the one thing Jakar is like, on that Malari, <laughs> that we, we, can agree. we can agree. And he takes a swig <laughs> of the drink. Which is a funny scene in of itself because we actually meet Jakar's, like, uh, second in command, his aide. Uh, who's a yep. character by the name of... Co, co something? Uh, Kodath, if Kodath. I'm saying that right. Uh, who... What I love about this is that Jakar has always been... Like, to us, he's been the one Narn that we've really seen, right? In any great detail. And he's always such a stickler for, like, who he is and what the Narn is. So he's been our window into seeing, like, how strict he is with himself and how i mean obviously he's slimy and sleazy in all the ways that he tries to like get away with things but it's very different from the way londo tries to get away with things and i love that when she shows up he's caught in a strip club drinking booze and he immediately has to like sort of and like saluting like women and londo (laughs) yeah (laughs) and his entire like toasting (laughs) so he's been caught in a moment where he's just kind of given into the the moment and he's he's like oh oh yes and and the the toss like uh yes uh the the security chief garibaldi uh, said you may be here he's like ah yes garibaldi is helpful isn't he (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he's become, but the line that, that, um, I mean I had to explain all this anyway but the, I was building up to one of the lines that I wanted to mention here is that this bad actor comes up to her during the middle of this scene it says hey uh, what's it he calls her hotspot I think or something yeah like it's so weird yeah but the line he says after those the one I know he does like hey how about we you know get out of here and go play s- scan the sector <laughs> is this a euphemism in the future <laughs> he is the worst actor He's a really bad actor, yeah. Which honestly, I think makes this this line that I noted down even funnier. Because <laughs> the scene it's... is is definitely hilarious, but it's because it's just so bad. It seems like it's from a different show. Almost. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she just kind of grills at him, and it scares the shit out of him when he runs away, which is you know. Yeah, it's such a bizarre scene. It's a, it's a weird scene, but Ed Ed was just to to her, so we get we get a good introduction for her. And who is she? Someone we've met before. Oh, the actress, yes. Uh, Mary <laughs> Waranov as Tara... Pa- I did not look this up, but Tara likes to check the cast... Me- every cast member that appears in everything we ever watch, Tara, like, fact-checks right. who they are. Um, and, I, you know, I, I hate to put it this way, but when, when Tara showed me the image of the movie that we'd seen her in before, uh, she was memorable because she... Let's just say there was a lot of cleavage in that movie. And... <laughs> The movie in question is Death Race 2000, and her character, like a lot of the characters in that film, was very... Oh, she gets totally naked at oh, one yeah. point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she plays Calamity Jane. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very sleazy B movie, so... Like, like... One, one of our favourites from our 70s month. Yes, yes. On the Atomic Cinema Experiment, our sci-fi movie podcast, which you can find on this YouTube channel, or on its own audio feed, The Atomic Cinema Experiment. That's right. Oh, see you. Are you slipping up? <laughs> You slip in a little plug, you know, but advertising. Well done. Uh, teach me, Sensei. Oh, yes. yes uh, you will learn many a thing, uh, my Padawan. I hate that I made a Star Wars reference. I hate it. I hate myself for it. Um, so, no, so, so you got this introduction. Really fun. And the other line that I wanted to mention is basically it's... I think it's later on after he's been drugged and he's waking up the next morning. But mm-hmm. Veer... Where are you going? Veer shows up on the, the, the screen... Uh, to say that he's late for his meeting again and londo calls him a moon-faced ambassador of joy or something it was it was such a great line uh i don't know there's a lot of good lines there's a lot of that even bother noting down because it was just so good later on basically when he's so preoccupied with the idea that he can't find uh his love interest whose name mm-hmm. was adira uh when he can't find adira after she sort of tricked him and kind of ran off He's so preoccupied that he can't find her. He can't find her because he's in love with her. That he's got this big, you know, negotiation meeting to go to that he's been putting off and he's promised to be there. And he goes, you know, Veer, I've had an idea. I think you should represent this entire empire in today's uh, meeting. <laughs> he's like, I thought that's a good idea. Uh, you know, uh, London's like, no, 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 no. I'll give you full, full diplomatic and, you know, 
representative yeah. authority uh, but as he's walking out he goes just uh don't give away the home world <laughs> he walks away yeah. which is i thought was really funny <laughs> it's on really its own. funny yeah i thought yeah. it was really funny on its own it was even funnier when it happened again later with jakar and the toth when when he's yeah. like you know what i'll come back when londo comes back i'm going to leave you in it's charge kodath kodath sorry <laughs> I keep saying that off. I'm sorry. Uh, but he's like, just don't give away the home world. Like, I, that callback. Yes. I think that joke is so funny, but it's funny because what it's actually doing is pointing out how similar these two idiots are to each other. And that's right. what makes them so funny to watch play off of each other. Right. I think it's, I think it's also interesting that, um, that Londo isn't really taking any of these negotiations seriously. And it seems like a really big, you know, diplomatic matter that he should really be there for as an mm-hmm. ambassador of centauri and you know looking back on the first episode where he's like talking about the glory days of mm. centauri and how he treats it now it's almost like he knows his civilization will never go back to what they used to be and is sort of given up on it like he's not even there oh, willing be, to yeah. negotiate i think that's one read i think every read that i would put forward is that it shows us that he i would let's assume that he still cares about that uh mm-hmm. and i'm just kind of like remembering from later episodes that i think he still does which is why i'm saying that but let's assume that he still cares about that this maybe shows us that he is a fool for love where like all of that went out the window or, or maybe more importantly that has like passion for the you know the great centauri republic and its history and trying to like bring it back to its glory days is uh, almost like a crutch like a fill-in because he feels empty in other ways and that's why he ignores it here because he's he's in love with someone he thinks yeah, oh maybe he's, i can he's be genuinely happy. in love with her yeah. and well she's also got something over him that he needs to get like that is probably more important and more precedent than what's happening in the negotiation it just i don't know it just comes across like he has put this off for a while you know? oh that's He's... later in the episode but <laughs> at, at the point in the episode where he gives his like d- duties to veer he doesn't even know about that yet he doesn't find out about the purple uh... files until after because he doesn't find out he doesn't... until until Trakus he... comes and tells him oh okay i thought when it, when he woke up from being dragged he sort of put things together no, he was just worried that she wasn't, like, calling him back. He thought he'd been just dumped, <laughs> essentially. He's, he was worried. Drugged and dumped? That's how I leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he realized he'd been drugged, okay? I think he just thought he'd had a bad night or something. You know, he's like, oh, I must have been ill or something. I feel yeah, awful. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that's what, maybe what I'd say, is that the reason why he's so passionate about the Empire and about the glory days, it's not that he doesn't care about it, but he's so passionate about it i think because it's almost a crutch i, I remember a couple of other beats that play for him and a few upcoming episodes mm-hmm. pretty early on where it kind of reinforces the idea that he is someone who really cares about love wants to be in love and is maybe reaching a point where he's sort of realizing that he's past that point where he can really have that anymore mm-hmm. and you without know, some kind of compromise or cost yeah. So there's this hope of love that he's presented with in this episode that he's trying to keep so much, even to the very end of the episode, I think shows us how much that he cares about that more than he does the Empire, or at least it appears he does in this episode, because he's willing to just like, hey, Veer, you go handle it, who cares? Go away. <laughs> it's also a negotiation with Jakar, so maybe he doesn't put it on a high priority list. Yes. But, and I all- mean, he's leave- he's letting, you know, Sinclair wait on him also. For sure. And I mentioned, obviously, the line with from Jakar, but I, I do love every time Jakar reacts to Londo being late or not being there, mm-hmm. uh, him being frustrated because he won't show up is delightful uh, in Definitely. all the ways that their interactions are. Uh, Veer, at one point, is playing a Switch, or their best attempt at what a Nintendo Switch <laughs> would be. <laughs> it looked like a like a handheld Street Fighter game or something, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Uh, and Sinclair was not happy with the, uh, like, go, go get him again. Go on, try him again. Go call him. Yeah. And then they cut to a later scene where they're waiting on Londo again. And, and Shakar and then and uh, Kodath, they're both playing the Street yeah. Fighter handheld thing. <laughs> yes. And then L- Londo walks in and he's like, let's start negotiations. And he immediately gets like a margarita or something like that. He's like, yes, yes, let's, let's have a drink as we negotiate. <laughs> oh, he's hung over here. He's got to <laughs> <laughs> have a little kicker. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So once he finds out, though, he does enlist the help of Sinclair eventually, uh, once he's, he realizes what the stakes are, because Trachis, the, the villainous guy, who's maybe one of the weaker elements of the episode, because he's just kind of like, 
generic villain kind of yeah honestly the storyline doesn't really do much for me i liked more of the character stuff that we got for our, our leads yeah even the even the subplot that goes on with uh ivanova and garibaldi I liked oh yeah we'll, a lot we'll more. yeah we'll jump to that after we're done with all the uh mm-hmm. but i mean the villain stuff, stuff and and yeah. this storyline is kind of yeah or even funny. just like i like sinclair helping uh londo and londo being like oh my my dear friend commander sinclair you're the only one i can turn to now uh yeah he sounds genuine when he says it but yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah you question it but like, the actual scene where they go to the strip club though and like sinclair has to like play like not gangster but he has to like be the big man who knows all the all did the you think it's odd that they didn't recognize him i mean is he not like the most important yeah. person on the ship <laughs> yeah that crossed my mind as well it was a bit weird that no one knew who he was yeah um because it makes sense that he has all this information he obviously has garibaldi keeping track and who the, the organized crime people are on the station it makes sense but yeah like isn't his face like in like commercials and doesn't he make announcements on, on the comm system <laughs> like <laughs> i don't know uh but uh, yeah so yeah. that part of the episode's a little bit goofy for me uh but i do you know i, I like the other i like how it ends i, I like that they mm-hmm. kind of trick Jakar into helping because because the bad guy Trakis wants to sell this information to the Narn because the Narn would pay highly for this information from this purple files, and they get Jakar to do a like a meeting with them. And I, I don't even have to tell Jakar exactly what he's supposed to be buying. I kind of I missed that detail if they did, but he he's willing to like meet with them and they have Talia there to basically confirm where she is and where, where he's kidnapped her and all that because he asks because it's worth mentioning she does go on the run at one point away from Trakis mm-hmm. as well. She sort of gets scared when she's supposed to meet him which does lead to once again the black market uh, mantis alien <laughs> our favorite character <laughs> yeah where uh trachis goes to him and is like yes i must find her and i'll pay you double if uh blah blah uh, mm-hmm. which again led to me being really delighted because talia is like very clear she's like i can't you know go invading privacy it doesn't work like that i'm not allowed to do that but she can yeah but she can kind of trick him into thinking about the things that yeah they, they want to know and she immediately gets By it saying, don't think about it yeah so what i love about this though is londo comes out and says to jakar oh you've helped you know save this entire republic in my career and jakar's just like what oh <laughs> he just storms off i love it <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a cruel trick it's a cruel cruel yes, trick yes. on jakar but he doesn't delightful. like being a pawn he does not no and he definitely especially it, for londo yeah i don't know what this this likes more being a pawn or londo <laughs> which one does it which one does he actually hate more i think that's a a valid question yes uh, so the uh the trivia i read oh god it. <laughs> it just caught me off guard that's all okay there there was apparently there was a scene that was filmed that was not in the episode Ooh. um but it showed six small holes on the back of a Ad- of adira uh, when she gets up from londo's bed <laughs> insinuating that the centauri have uh centauri males have six genital organs <laughs> so those are her females genitalia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what so he just like rips open his shirt and he's got like six dicks <laughs> on his chest and belly yeah <laughs> i guess they decided to take that out yeah the because show. they thought that's a bit silly and people are going to make fun <laughs> of it and they were right so they were wise <laughs> So I will continue I to. Ass- I'll. I'll know. I now know. Lando has six dicks. No, they took it out. I'm, <laughs> from this point on, I will assume that the genitalia of the the Centauri is where we'd otherwise expect it to be. This is why Garibaldi didn't believe him when he's when Lando told him that humans were descendants of Centauri. <laughs> you know, Lando. We I only che- have one. Yeah, we only have one dick. I I, I checked. It, you know, this does not check out. <laughs> that, uh, i just imagine him try to explain it ah garibaldi you know over centuries evolution you know things change the other five fell off somewhere <laughs> oh, pretty great dear um okay yeah <laughs> so you're welcome yeah i don't know how to follow that bit of trivia up jeez uh so at the end though when you know she's back and you know, she, londo gives her freedom because we see him because he, he's very genuine throughout the episode he gives her this this uh like broche 
kind of like thing that belonged in his to his like great great grandmother or whoever it was mm -hmm. and he gets all these like you know fancy sci-fi flowers that he had grown for her like sort of glow um yeah it's because like, we when we first see londo it, it's the opening scene which mm -hmm. which did like i find i did find striking that the opening scene is like this club music it oh, doesn't yeah. even start with uh like any like science fiction theme from babylon 5 it's like right into the dance music and it goes straight to the strip club which i liked um but like he's admiring this woman on stage like isn't she beautiful and then we see it cuts to them like in bed together and then he says oh i grew these flowers for you so it's really like coming across that they've, they've been in a relationship for a while oh yeah like, you get the impression because when he goes back to his place afterwards she's waiting for him in bed so they've clearly yeah. been seeing each other for some time uh, right before this yeah. he had to grow flowers for her. that takes a long time yeah maybe not in the future yeah maybe not maybe they've got some magic <laughs> sprinkly dust that they put. maybe these flowers are some like bamboo like they just grow real fast yeah yeah well it's because there's certain kinds of bamboo which i think you can literally see growing before your eyes you can watch them grow and you can see cool. it uh which is fancy um so no, but the ending though he actually you know, gets her freedom because you know this is something else we learn mythology wise i think it's probably quite important is that Cent yeah. centauri do like basically if someone has no family have... or power or honor they'll, they'll just rent out people as slaves they have legal slavery yeah. which is yeah of note <laughs> yeah um and to what extent like you know is this like traditional slavery or, or is it on just like a one-to-one -one, like basis like this one where she's essentially his maybe not servant but like lackey you know she's doing all this stuff for, for the, her master so that, that's a very interesting sort of tactic to look at and uh maybe see how they, they, they handle this later in some ways if it is ever brought up again which it might be it may yeah. not be um I, I definitely think the actual plot of the episode doesn't seem like it's that important overall to what this show's going to be. I do think the character stuff with Londo that we have talked about, about mm -hmm. his how he feels about love, how romantic he is, how that seems to either g take away or add to how he feels about his his people, his his world, his empire. I think I think that stuff is important from a character development point of view. Um, the stuff about trying to steal the purple, maybe the purple fails to come up again, I don't know, but even if they do like it's just like a line of nobility yeah does it take any like explanation like let's say this episode didn't happen and the purple fails get brought up again or we somehow accidentally skipped it i don't think it'd be that confusing when they, they mention what they are it's like the purple fails with all the secrets of the, the centauri you know okay yeah i mean the episode is called born born to the purple right that's yeah. that is about like being born into nobility yeah yeah like all that phrase so and then here, of course, literally they have a thing called the Purple Files, so they're all the purple, yeah, the purple families, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's an interesting sort of collection of details, but it's the character stuff with Londo that I think is the most interesting. It's definitely the best stuff of the episode. Yeah, and the Ivanova stuff I liked. Oh well, yeah, we'll get to that. We say just to mention the ending. Yeah, he sends her off. He offers for her to stay, but she says no. Like the the pain of like being here is too great. And he says, we'll go we'll take this back because this was a present. I'm not taking it back and wear it as a free woman. And, you know, it ends kind of like a, a sort of sweet, bittersweet kind of week. Yeah, so. they do that thing where she walks away a little bit, looks back, he walks, looks back. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to get you, you know, put your neck out here. What? Do we see her again? Does Adira ever appear again? Yes. I was going to say yes too, so there's not really much of a Wait, okay. Well, I clicked on her name and I saw that she does come back up again. Oh, you cheat! <laughs> I I always look them up. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. But what well, if he's like someone up though? They're only in this one episode. You're like, oh well, they're probably dead by the end of the episode. Well, I mean, I don't know. I I don't know what, like what context she comes back. Maybe she comes back in a dream or okay. like a prophecy. Do you, do you at least need to finish thing. watching the episode so that you, you you don't know in advance that someone's not coming back? Well, uh, no, because I I check while I'm watching. <laughs> I don't I didn't look I don't look specifically to see if they're coming back in the episode, but I was just scanning through and I saw Babylon Five listed in two episodes. Yeah, but you you know you you're spoiling things for yourself. That's all I'm saying. Well, I was just looking up guest stars. Like I don't expect a guest star to return. Like I was looking up the other guy who played what is it the Dracula guy. Trackus. Trackus. I looked up him. Like his voice is familiar. I'm, I'm gonna look this up while I'm watching. And yeah, I didn't. I couldn't, I couldn't pin him. I 
I don't know what he, I know him from. He's not terrible, but I didn't I didn't enjoy him as much as the uh the the, the Soul Hunter last episode. It was a lot more theatrical. <laughs> so Oh, aren't you happy you got to do that again? All right, <laughs> Thank yeah. The sub, the subplot you, you, you want to get to uh, Ivanova and Garibaldi, which is basically just Garibaldi it catches like a an illegal transmission. There's like a gold back channel that's like you know for higher ups and whatnot, and some someone's yeah. used it inappropriately. So he's trying to find this person, but they're covering their tracks really well. And about halfway through the episode, he keeps talking to Ivanova about it, and she's kind of smug that he's kind of not finding anything, and that the person is like really good at covering the tracks and it's like it's probably her and mm-hmm. then you get to like the big final element of it where he's like, okay i've caught her la- i've caught her in the act and even he thinks it's her at this point because he even says okay uh russian or that no, was lieutenant commander gremlin he calls her he's like let's see what mm-hmm. this is going on but then it's this emotional call with Very her personal yeah, thing, her, yeah. her father's dying is literally on the hospital bed dying and is, this is the final message where he says he's proud of her, but he he never really showed the love that he had for her, so he failed as a father. You know, he, he, you know, he's both love and respect, and he only gave her the respect. So yeah, and she cries. And she's crying, and she's so stern, so it's very emotional. And we yes. already know like the history with her mother and stuff, so mm-hmm. yeah. we know this is a big loss for her. Yeah, no, I mean obviously it's not as important, I don't think, or maybe not as important, but not as. Uh, intricate is the londo stuff which i think is a lot more kind of layered from a character point where this is a bit more surface level okay like she's had a bad relationship with her, her parents even her father is not someone who she's had like a great time with right mm-hmm. he isn't like a terrible father necessarily he could be a lot worse but well, he's a... apologizing for a lot yeah so there's a, there's a distance there but there's a kind of a sweet moment afterwards where garibaldi's like eh, you know what yeah there's a glitch well, you know i don't think it'll happen again and she's like, no, it won't. it won't happen again, right? Yeah, it won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I'll buy you a drink. She's like, no, I'm on duty, but maybe another time. And it's, it's this kind of downbeat note. It's, it's one of those things where the show's been doing this the last couple of episodes, but it'll have a subplot to flesh out one of the other main characters who aren't one of the, say, the central four, say. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's no delay in this episode. It was obviously a prominent feature last time. Right. Uh, so. Yeah, which probably means we're due for an all-out Jakar episode at some point. Yeah, we still don't have Billy Mummy, so... Yeah, Billy and Mummy is all I like to Well, it's only... Well, it has, there should be three M's in Mummy. There's only two, so I'm going with Mummy. Okay. I Billy mean, maybe Mimi. you're right. I've always said Mummy, but maybe it's wrong. <laughs> also, the, the, the word uh, Mummy just sounds weird to say someone's name. Billy and Mummy. Yeah. Maybe it's Mimi. <laughs> I don't know. Mimi uh, sounds stupid also. It does sound stupid, I agree. You could be right. <laughs> you could be right. I I'm just I'm using my understanding of the English language as flawed as it may be. Linear. We'll just say linear. Yes, linear, yes. Uh <laughs> so yeah. Not a bad episode. Uh I I do think it's the weakest of the three main episodes so far, but I do like all the stuff that adds to Londo's character. And yeah. He does have a lot and, of funny moments with uh, Veer and the others in Jakar, so. Yeah, and we get some background on just the Centauri culture. Yeah. That uh, they, you know, allow for slaves and maybe their their glory days are behind them and that's, they don't really see anything ahead of them anymore. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. I think some do, but there's like an apathy towards it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're both kind of, we're past their prime and but I, I think we definitely see the idea that Londo does believe they can and almost again, like I was saying earlier, almost coming out of this idea that he's filling the void in his life with this passion for this this drive that he has and hatred of Jakar. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, because because I, I do think one of the themes of this is one of the things we talk about a lot in Twilight Zone is the uh, the idea of nostalgia being dangerous. And I do think that's a theme in this show, which, you know, we'll get to. But nostalgia for uh, Centauri and Londo, but what, for... What is this season called? Signs and Portents? Yeah. But for uh, Jakar, it's more revenge and... But again, it's again they're both about the past. They're both about obsessing over the past in one way or the other. Yeah. And, like... Uh, I mean, both of them are sort of about looking the other way for for somebody you are close to like mm-hmm. um you know she 
the the Centauri woman did betray her people by trying to give the the nobility line away, mm -hmm. and Londo made it made it so that you know she didn't have to be arrested or worse for the crime. And Garibaldi looked the other way for Ivanova for breaking the rules and using the secure channel to call her father. And and I think he also kind of learned a lesson about you know digging into people's personal lives. <laughs> Yeah, because he sort of uh, saw something very personal that probably shouldn't have been shared with anyone yeah. else. Although it technically was like a rule being broken, he didn't know it was a personal thing. So yeah, but he stuck around for the call when it was clear what it was about. True. Yeah, he should have probably shut it off <laughs> I, after the first like twenty seconds when he realized what this was. He's like, you know what? I should probably give them some privacy about now. Yeah. Uh, but no, he was sitting eating his popcorn like he was watching his cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, no, we're, I think we're. D d do a, a a good Jakar episode, uh, I think, to like flesh out the the Narn a little bit. But uh, I because I, I, I think the humans, and when I say the humans, I really mean with Sinclair representing them, and then Delenn, okay. they both seem to be looking forward and being better, whereas both Jakar and Londo seem to be obsessed with the past and either getting revenge or bringing back to the glory kind of thing, right? So, um, well, super fascinating to to watch yeah. it all play out. All right. I look forward to it. As, as do I, as do I. So that is episode three of season one. Uh, and we'll be back next time with episode four. Uh, please do uh, like and subscribe. It is the easiest way to support everything we do uh, on the channel. If you like the content is, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. If you want notifications, comment and let us know what you think of the episode. Please. Yes, but you can, of course, also support us financially. Uh, we can do that, Tara. Yes, if you enjoy our show, please check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV. And if you donate as low well as $1 per month, you will get access to bonus episodes of other shows we do, including our science fiction movie review show, The Atomic Cinema Experiment. And if you donate $5 per month, you will get access to these Babylon 5 episodes one week early. So please check it out and continue to watch the show along with us and let us know what you think and please no spoilers because i don't yes. know what's going to happen next yes that's part of the fun here because i know there's some people watching us along with us for the first time uh, which is super cool because they get to have this conversation from mm -hmm. us that maybe fills in the, something they've missed from the 90s uh, and then for people who do love the show they're just excited to see us react and uh dive into some of the meteor stuff as we go further so no super cool so uh, we'll be back next week, so thank you once again for watching or listening. Catch us on Twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates, but otherwise that is us, so thank you once again. We'll see you next time. Keep watching TV. <laughs> Just don't give away the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. Okay.